Greetings, my fellow space adventurers. My name is Madison Allen, and I'm finishing up my first year of my PhD program at the University of Michigan. Now, at the Plasma Dynamics and Electric Propulsion Laboratory, I work on calibrating models for facility effects for hot thrusters by using an optimal experimental design. Now, you may be asking, and that's a great question. Hot thrusters are an electric propulsion device that use plasma. Right, what's a plasma? Lightning is an example of a plasma, but so are the northern lights and neon signs. And how else would we know if our favorite pizza spots open up late at night? Think about it. Now, plasma is basically ionized gas. It's made up of positively and negatively charged particles. Hull thrusters eject this plasma so that our spacecrafts can. Now, do you think car manufacturers such as Toyota or Tesla, do they sell their products without testing them first? No, because that would be bad and dangerous. Now, just as car manufacturers have to test their products, so do we. We test our hawk thrusters so that we can mimic how they would perform in space. To do that, we need special facility. Like the large vacuum test facility at the University of Michigan, space is a vacuum. And if we seek to replicate space conditions, then we need to suck out all the air inside of this chamber that's bouncing around. Unfortunately, even with the state-of-the-art facilities, we can't get down to that low pressure. There's still some gas particles that are floating around. So the facility can alter our thruster performance. For example, as pressure decreases, the plume might expand or diverge, and this gives us a false sense of how much thrust we're actually producing in space. So should we just give up and call it quits? No, we don't. Instead, we create models for these facility effects. So first, we can measure plume properties such as current density or how much thrust we're producing as the facility changes. And we can follow this data trend and fit a model to this data. And from there, we can follow this trend to what would be space conditions or extrapolate to zero pressure. Now you saw how big the chamber was. So changing the pressure and taking all of these data points can get a bit expensive. And we might not have access to the full region of the plume. We do need data to fit these models. But here's where my work comes in. We want to see if we can fit the models with less data. But how would we do that? Well, we use statistics. We can predict what design inputs such as the amount of pressure in the chamber or what locations we're measuring can give us the most information to inform our models. We want to identify a minimum set of optimal data points that can inform our models just as well as say a full larger set of data points. We call this smaller set of data points an optimal experimental design or an OED for short. Current efforts in electric propulsion seek to reach higher power for say crewed missions or deep space exploration. Now, as we reach higher power for our hull thrusters, there is going to be an increase in output, and this output can damage our probes. So it's even more important to apply this optimal experimental design for a fast way to take data and fit our models. If you have any more questions or want to learn more, feel free to reach out.